Hey everybody, if you've got a wall crack, like in this picture here, and you wanna know how to fix it, well, I'm gonna show you how to do that right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel here at That Kilted Guy Videos. My name is Guy Purcell and I welcome you guys. And I'm a 35 year drywall professional who first walked on a pair of stilts spotting nails for my dad 50 years ago. And I've been in the military a few times and gotten out of it a bit, but I've got over 35 years experience. And for the past 15 years, I've had my own business of Mr. Patch Drywall. So now it's my goal to pass on my years of experience to you guys and teach you guys how you can do a lot of this stuff yourself. You can do it and you can save some money, take pride in your workmanship, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it right. In my videos, I try and teach you how to do this stuff and I try and teach you the right way and not the handyman quick and down and dirty way. And today what we're gonna do is walk you through fixing this wall crack. Now I'm probably gonna overdub most of this because I don't have my microphone on here, but I'll just walk you through how I fix cracks like this. You can see several examples here and the technique pretty much applies to everything. First thing we gotta do is Scrape the surface down, knock off any bumps in that, find some studs to resecure things, and put some new screws in, get it solid, mesh tape it, hot mud it, coat it, sand it, and then retexture it. So let's get started on that. Okay, now we're ready to put some screws in and I'm using an actual drywall screw gun. This one is cordless, but you'll see here that my first few screws missed. And with a drywall screw gun, you can tell pretty easy. They make a sinking, ratcheting sort of sound. So I broke out the stud finder to figure out what's going on. And it basically told me it's there. I was probably just missing it by a little bit. So I went ahead and kept trying and sure enough I found solid wood so there could be a chunk missing back there all kinds of reasons why it's not there but just keep going until you get some screws in it make it solid and tighten everything back down this will help keep it from cracking again in the future now I re-scrape it because putting in the screws often loosens up little chunks of mud so give it a quick re-scrape right down the seam now I use this handy little mesh tape gun here. These are really handy. If you want one of these, I'll put the uh, link in the description down below. Basically, it's real simple design. You pull it off here. It cuts with that razor right there. So wherever you want to cut it, you cut. I don't recommend these for the angles, but it is set up to roll into the angles. I'm not real fond of that. And then I always like to put some of this spray adhesive on here because mesh tape, even though it's self-adhesive, it kind of likes to fall off on its own when you're not looking. Helps it stick better and stay. Okay, before we go any further, if you're gonna do a repair like this, you need to understand how to coat it properly. Anytime you add joint tape on top of drywall that's not recessed, you basically are creating a hump. So in this illustration here, you can see the sheetrock with some joint tape on top of a crack and then the mud on top of that floated out nice and wide. And you see how it creates a nice gentle slope to it well any shadow that might appear is going to get broken up so gently you won't see it but if you float it out too narrow you see how much more abruptly the hump tapers off 
that actually creates harsher shadows which you can see in this bad repair example. Now this one's got several issues with it actually. The big one is it's too thick but even if they left it that thick if you were to float that out say about three feet wide and make it a nice gentle hump that wouldn't show. You're seeing it because of the sharp drop off creating those shadows around the edges. So you want to figure out how wide you need to coat it to make it go away. And that's kind of an experience thing. So I recommend just floating it extra wide. You can't really hurt yourself by going too wide, but you can hurt yourself by going too narrow. So put a straight edge on it like I did here. And I just used my 12 inch knife and see how much it rocks. So in this case, I went ahead and coated this about 24 inches. Now, if it has much more of a hump, you would actually go up to 36 inches. And on some really bad ones, I've even gone four feet wide. You just have to go wide enough to make the hump softer and more gentle. So it's important when you're floating out a hump like this that you use a wide knife. A wide knife, as you can see, will kind of float and conform and give you a softer curve to the hump. So like in this instance, if you were using a six inch knife to try and do that same thing, for one, they're stiffer, and two, they just aren't able to span and float. So you end up with this sharper kind of hump that's just not good. You want the softer one like the 12 inch knife will give you because it just floats better. Okay, my final pointer is how you sand it. When you sand it, you're just trying to sand it to a gentle round hump, but the edges are real important. If you don't feather the outside edges, that can give you away also. Like, let's look at that bad repair again. If we zoom in on this and you look at that left edge, you'll see how it's not feathered out right. It's feathered out rounded like I showed in that illustration. So that's where the shadow is most prominent and that's giving away that edge really badly. Okay, I already put my knife on this, checked it for a hump. I also pay attention to where the light's coming from because the more the light shines across the hump, the worse it's gonna show, so the wider you gotta coat it. You can see there's light over on the left coming through a window, and this hump wasn't too bad, so I'm gonna start out by coating it about two knife widths wide, and this is a 12 inch mud knife. So roughly 20 inches wide. So I put some down the middle and then I just start shaping it. But I, you got to be sure and feather those edges. You don't want to leave harsh, abrupt outside edges. And then you just kind of start shaping it to that gentle curve. And then a lot of times I like to end by going right down the middle and kind of flattening out the middle a little bit. Okay, now I let that set up. That was hot mud, which is a fast setting joint compound like this. I let that set up for about 30 minutes. I believe that was 20 minute mud. And then I went ahead and put another coat of regular lightweight all purpose mud. I prefer this plus three, but you can use whatever you want for this coat. I let it dry thoroughly. And now this is how it looks the next day. Okay, I've got this crack all coated with mud. It's dried overnight. You can see it now it needs some sanding to take off the lap marks and just a general smoothing out. There shouldn't be too much sanding. Now I'm gonna use a power sander and I'll show you a little picture of it here. I've got a video reviewing it. This thing will cut down your dust tremendously. So I'll put links in the description too if you want to pick up one of those. There's some cheaper versions out now than the one I'm using. Just the main thing is make sure you have a good quality vacuum that's rated for drywall. If you get too small of one, these things will overpower them and just clog them up constantly. I know because I've been there. So I have a $500 vacuum for that reason. But you can get by with a good shop back with a drywall rated filter on it. Now we're just going to sand the middle for, for now. Then we're gonna hit the edges with a sanding sponge and then this thing's ready to texture.
for the edges, we're gonna use this sanding sponge here and you just tilt it. You tilt it like that and you're just trying to feather out those edges and I'll show you a picture of before and after here. Okay, so like I said, you tilt your sponge and apply most of the pressure on the outer edge so that you're giving it that feathered edge and just go all the way around anywhere it's an edge out in the open. Now, when you come to these inside angles or corners, you need to be careful because if you do it wrong, you can literally sand a gouge into your finish. So here I have the sponge turned sideways so that the side that's touching the wide area of mud has no sanding grit on it. And then after I clean off that right hand side, as you can see there, I'm just cleaning off the mud that spilled over. Then I'll come back a quick pass down the left hand side just to clean up any gouges that I did make. They're probably minor, but that's it. Okay, that's basically it right there. All we have to do now is to mask off and spray some texture. And if you wanna know how to spray texture, it depends on which one you're doing. I have videos out there that'll teach you how to spray knockdown orange peel and hand textures like skip trials. So check out my other videos. And if you like our content, consider joining us on Patreon where I upload some of these videos with additional bonus content and you can show your support for our videos, get more in-depth answers and so on. And in the meantime, those might be popping up, but we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks a lot.